Well, this fall and it's October, or just about to be October, and what are we talking about? Garlic and hurricanes. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet, where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey folks, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Man, welcome to the Road by Road Show. Look here, it's, uh, it's hurricane season, Sheila, did you know that? Mm-hmm. Who do we have coming up? Ian. 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 Ian, Ian, Ian is Ian. making his nest. By the time this time airs, Ian will be here. Well, close. 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 Yeah. Ian is causing some stir right here. Everybody is, you know, panicking a little bit, buying water. You know, we had a friend of ours that lives in Panama City, Florida, and he showed us a picture. Was it Walmart? Mm -hmm. Half and a mile long. The, the, half a mile on waiting to get in. Folks, there's something wrong with you if you wait in line for a half an hour to get to Walmart if you need to prepare for a hurricane. You need to do that way before a hurricane comes. You need to make those preparations. And that's what we're all about. Yeah, well, a couple of days ago, I started taking water. I got some gallon jugs, freezing it, putting it in the fridge. Think about that. Why do you want to get all stressed out about going bottle buy a bottle of water when you simply just take some jugs you've used, you reuse those? Old milk jugs. Old milk jugs. Fill them up, put them in the refrigerator and freeze them. Mm -hmm. You got ice water. You got ice and then you got water when it moves. We try not to stress out on things too much anymore, don't we? No, I did buy some bread. But we're prepared. Yeah. And we you know we feel like we're prepared. As prepared as as you can get. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. been through a few but of these. But for all those that is headed toward, we're thinking about you, praying yep. for you. Yep, absolutely. And we're kind of in the, we're in the path. We don't know where we're at. We really. think we're in the path. Yeah. So we'll see. Anyhow, we've made our preparations. We've got food galore. we got, we in good shape, we think. So we're not going to panic and get all crazy. So, you know, think about hurricanes. I thought back about, uh, the two hurricanes that, that I remember the most, this had the most impact on us, was Kate. Mm -hmm. Kate was in 1985, and it came through in November of 1985. We had a six-month-old. <clears throat> we woke up in the middle of the night. Now, mind you, we lived in a 900-square-foot house and not the soundest house. No, it was an older house. It was older, but it was our first house, 900 square feet. Woke up at <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning, and there was water hitting me on my nose. I got up out of bed, got her up. We moved the bed. By the time we got the bed moved, the ceiling fell in. The ceiling in. fell in. Yeah. So, so Kate was pretty dramatic. And then we, we didn't have electricity for a week. Several days. Yeah. Several days. Yeah. And uh, but we made it through it. We probably was less prepared for that when we was in here. Had to have a new roof. Yeah, we was in our early early twenties. Yeah. Well, were we even twenty? I was. I, was. I might have been nineteen. Yeah, you were 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Long time ago. we were young, young and dumb, but we made it through it. <laughs> we did. Yeah. And then the next one was just a few years ago in 2018. We had Michael come through. And mm -hmm. if you remember, remember Michael, Michael was pretty severe. It was online to come straight through where we're at, and it veered off a little bit at the last moment, spared us somewhat. And we expected the worst out of that one. Now, we was really prepared yeah. for Michael. I stayed up all night with him. <laughs> Uh, but we did have very, very little damage. Mm -hmm. And we got power, what was it, two days afterwards? Yeah. So we wasn't out of power long. So Michael was really bad where it come in the coast and hit the Mexico Beach. But on where we're, in the line where it veered off, it spared us. It wasn't too bad here. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, we hope and pray that this one here is going to be, gonna be okay. And um, if you're one of those type of people that gets all stressed out about these situations here, try to prepare yourself way in advance. Try to be prepared for a hurricane at any time. Mm -hmm. We have canned goods put up galore. Man, what all? We got, we got ways, because we do a little camping. We got uh, gas-powered stoves. We got grill, outside cooktop. Yeah. 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 Always keep you some water on hand anyway. So yeah. we, everything's good. Don't just try not to be stressed, but be prepared. Be prepared. Yep. Before you need to be prepared. Before you need to be yep. prepared. And think about this right here. Oh, what you got there? Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. So what if they was a natural catastrophe and you got sweet potatoes, <laughs> you don't need any refrigeration for them, 
-hmm. and you can just cook them when you want. Right. So I did some sweet potato chips here and sweet potato soup. I'm actually thinking about canning some of that soup. That soup is really good. It's a little different. I didn't different. put any bacon on it. And I'm not, okay, I'm not a huge sweet potato fan unless it's a dessert. I'm not one of those kind of people that eat sweet potatoes as a vegetable mm -hmm. with my uh, others. I like to eat it as a dessert. This is reminds me a lot of regular, what we call Irish potato soup. It's uh, actually sweet potatoes and carrots. Very hearty. With some... And it's a pu puree kind of mm -hmm. like. Um, garlic, onion, ginger. Mm-hmm. I can paprika. taste the ginger in there. Taste, I love ginger. Yep. Paprika, um, some cumin. It did call so, for some curry powder, and I didn't have any, so I left that out. Um, very, very good on a cold day. It was mm -hmm. very good as it is. So what are we talking about tonight? Garlic? Garlic. Garlic. How do you select the garlic for you? Hmm is the question of the night. So garlic's one of the easiest crops to grow. It's great for beginners. You can plant it and forget it. That's good. Very little uh, pest disease, pest pressure disease. And you're normally growing it when you don't have other things competing mm -hmm. out in your garden during the winter time. So it's perfect for the beginner gardener because it's forgiving. Yep, and most people, you know, garlic has come to be very popular in the last few years. Back when we was coming up, you never did hear about garlic. Mm -hmm. But it's become very popular, and also these very unique varieties have uh, a lot of chefs have used them and things like that, and they call for a lot of them in... My nose is running a little bit. I don't think it's from that ginger. <laughs> you know, most of the garlic today is grown in China. Yep. Yep. And in the U.S., most of it's grown in California. Yep, a little community called Gilroy, California. I believe they have a garlic festival. Oh, they there. do. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're looking at what type of garlic you want to grow, you've got to look at your location, where you're at, and what's going to do best for your climate. And then also look at what you like as far as flavor. Do you like a spicy? Do you like a mild? Mm -hmm. um, that's going to determine what you're going to grow for yourself. All right. And also look at the name. If it says California white, more than likely it's going to grow best in California. If it says Texas rose, more than likely it's going to grow best in Texas. The Siberian, which is a, like a Russian we'll garlic. Best in Siberia. Well, no. <laughs> in areas where it's really cold. Yeah. So a lot of times the name can determine how well it's going to grow. Also, before you get started, mm -hmm. you're biting at the bits there, aren't you? Uh, I, I am. I'll finish your soup. Mm -hmm. There is some history. Garlic goes back, goes way back. So the Greek used, Olympians used to eat garlic before their competitions. <laughs> the Roman soldiers ate garlic before they went to battle. Mm -hmm. And even in World War II, when there was a shortage of penicillin, they used garlic to put on the soldier's wounds. I did not know that. To help prevent infection. Hmm. So it, it, the history is there. It's also today can be used medicinally. Did yep. I say that right? You, you, close enough for me. <laughs> um, and there's actually um, good studies out there that backs us up for high blood pressure for uh, treating uh, bad cholesterol, raise your good cholesterol. Um, it's even, they think, along with the blood pressure properties, the cholesterol properties, that it aids in maybe prevention or slowing down of dementia and Alzheimer's. That's interesting as well. Also has antioxidants galore, especially the red garlic, mm -hmm. and boost your immune system. So. Garlic is good for you. And good tea. And good tea. You may not smell good afterwards. Well, right. that's the reason the Roman soldiers ate it, where they could fend off their... their no, their, not really. Okay. But anyway, garlic is good for you. And garlic is uh, used a lot in some of the newer dishes. Now, a lot mm -hmm. of recipes call for them. Now, if you go I to... I can put garlic in everything. Yeah. 
everything. We even roasted, we'll get on, mm -hmm. we'll talk about elephant. We roasted elephant garlic last year by itself. Mm -hmm. I ate it by itself. So the types of garlic, mm -hmm. there's basically two types. Right. Hard neck and soft neck. Now varieties, according to what source you look at, there's over 700. I read over 600, but anyhow, what's the difference 600, between 600 700 varieties? varieties. But basically, you break it down into soft neck or hard neck. Mm -hmm. So what do you have there? This right here is soft neck. So when you go to the grocery store and you buy garlic in the grocery store, 99% of the time, you're gonna be buying a soft neck variety. And the way you tell the difference there is this real soft right here compared to the hard necks, real soft right there. They didn't have the hard stem that goes all the way through there. Now, most of the time in the grocery store, you're buying a variety called silver skin, which is the kind that they import from China. They're just about <clears throat> all your grocery stores carry those, and you've seen those little packs before. Mm -hmm. And most people get in a little bit of a tight when they get called for garlic in their recipe, and they run down there, and that's what they buy. Imported from China, a little bit is grown in California. It has a mild flavor. Yeah. It is usually smaller, mm -hmm. has a lot more cloves. Right. And it's the standard is what it's we think garlic It's pretty is. much what you use, yeah. most people use for cooking. Yeah. Now, garlic's pretty much like to have some cool weather. Soft necks, and there's several different varieties here, they say can be used probably more so in warmer climates than the hard neck is. I'm not real sure about that. There is some varieties out there. There's Creole varieties and Cajun varieties. A lot of people have had decent results growing them in the South. I would like to know what you guys have been successful growing garlic in zone eight and nine, what variety you use and what the way you do it. Is there anything particular that causes you to be successful? You plant it at a particular time. Comment below and let us know because I am I'm fascinated with growing garlic in the south because we struggle down here in zone eight and nine growing the soft necks and the hard necks. Some of the literature that you read says these varieties that soft neck that's easier to grow here in the south and some say there's a few varieties of hard neck. You tell me your thoughts mm -hmm. here. We're interested in some of these uh, Cajun varieties see if they will grow here in mm -hmm. deep south. I did a detailed plant planting years ago. I must have used 20 different varieties and I did a trial during the winter time and I was unsuccessful growing hard <laughs> neck or soft neck garlic. Now the soft neck you can braid mm -hmm. because the stems on them are soft. So like you've, you've all seen these pictures where they braid it up and they look so, so pretty. Yeah, that's your soft that's neck soft braid. Neck. Let's cut into this right here. And when you cut into it, you're going to see a circle of smaller cloves. Yes, yeah, see right there? And there's no stem down the middle, like right. in the hard. That is your soft And there's right. many papery layers. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's pretty much all garlic. Yep. Now, hard neck, on the other hand, hard neck normally does better in colder, colder climates than soft neck does and it's more pungent. So the soft neck has more of your typical garlic flavor. But if you're like something that is a lot more pungent, then you probably want to go with the hard necks because they have a more distinctive flavor. If you go to the farmer's market and there's some garlic growers there that's selling garlic, most of the time they're selling the hard neck garlic because mm. they do offer now the hard neck does not store as long as the soft. Right. This can last up to a year. Or this three to four Man, months. Hard, hard neck. Hard neck. <laughs> can you get it? Yeah, finally. Okay. Yep. See the stem right there? That's that hard neck that comes up in there. Now the cloves on this particular one seems to be a little bit bigger. Is the cloves normally on the hard mm -hmm. the hard neck bigger than the soft neck? Mm-hmm. It forms a close around the center of the stalk. It's mm -hmm. easier to peel, ideal for northern climates. Um, the bulb is thinner, so it won't store as long because that doesn't have these layers right. of the paper right. around it. Right. Also, one thing about the hard neck is it has scapes. 
Yes. That form. That the soft neck does not. That the soft does not. So you could actually eat the scapes, and it's great for roasting, for pesto. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get two for one there. Mm -hmm. You bang for your buck. Yep. So for the last few years, uh, I'm going to say uh, probably a year before pre-COVID, there's been a huge demand for people wanting to grow their own garlic. Therefore, the demand has been pretty substantial and supply has not been that great. There's been a, pretty much a shortage of seed garlic in the last few years. We were able to get a decent amount of organic German white this year, and we sold out in no time. Mm -hmm. Now, the farmer that I get them from grows it up north in New York State. And the reason we don't grow seed garlic here in the south is, number one, it takes cold weather to get these really nice big bulbs. But when they grow garlic up in the northern states, see, they grow it longer during the summertime, and they don't have to store it as long till we start planting again here in the south. So if we grew garlic, seed garlic, we would harvest our garlic in springtime. Mm -hmm. And then we would have to store it all season long till fall. And it doesn't store that well, seed garlic doesn't, but it does so much better for those guys that harvest late. That's the reason you find your people that grow seed potatoes and seed garlic normally are in the northern states. They do so much better job with the seed types than we do here in the south. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to talk about the other garlic? The other garlic is elephant. The other garlic so that's not garlic. Here. No. We didn't even bring it. We didn't bring it up here. No. Elephant garlic. Mm -hmm. It's not really a garlic, but technically and botanically, it is a leek. Okay, so let's throw up a link there of our elephant garlic product page to show everybody what we're talking about right here. Now, if you're in zone eight or nine, or if you're a beginner gardener, or just want to try for the first time, or you've been growing garlic for a while, but you want to try something a little different, I highly encourage you to grow elephant garlic. It is the most forgiving one to grow of all of them. Super mild flavor. Yeah, it's the mildest of all of them. Um, great for salads, soups, that's actually what's in here. Yeah, and we, like I said, we roasted just some whole garlic last year, and ate the whole garlic roasted. Mm -hmm. So it makes a great treat like that. So elephant garlic, do you know what year it was introduced into the garden? I do not. 1941. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, after 10 years of commercial growing, it was changed from giant garlic to elephant garlic. Hmm. My introduction to elephant garlic was a few years ago. I was talking to a market farmer in Tallahassee, Florida, They'd been doing it for a long time. And he told me his number one moneymaker was elephant garlic. Mm -hmm. Of all the crops that he grew. I can see that. So at that time, I started growing some elephant garlic and uh, I kind of got intrigued with it. We did great with it here. I normally plant it about the same time that I do my, my sweet onions, which is around the first of November. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this much, every year, my elephant garlic is about two weeks behind the harvest of my onion crop. Yeah. You want to grow it pretty much like you do your onions. It like sulfur, it's a pretty heavy feeder. You got to kind of tend to it in about 30 days before harvest time, you want to cut off your fertility. Mm -hmm. So I have a few questions that were submitted about okay. garlic. Rapid fire here. Rapid fire, okay. So I think you covered this. First time garlic growers, what do you recommend? Elephant garlic? Elephant garlic. How much garlic would you plant for a family? Wow, that really depends on how much you would use. So how much do you think we use a year? Because you um, like to put it in, you make a lot of salsa. You put it in all your salsa. Never have enough. Um, I read that you, for the average family, you want to plant where you have 68 cloves. So that's one a week plus some extra, and then you can even save some for seed garlic for the next year. Hmm. Cool. So 68 cloves. So 68 or 6 to 8? 68. 68. Okay. So an average clove, am I right? An average bulb has eight cloves. Somewhere in there, yeah. So if you planted... Um, we actually selling it by the clove this year. Yeah. So it makes it a little bit easier. And the reason we did that is is because weight can change during shipment. So if it's pre-packed and we bring it in here, it may not weigh the same. So we've switched this year. To so sell a pound is about eight cloves. Mm, not really. It's really dependent, but we're selling it by the clove. Eight cloves. 
eight cloves. So how many cloves would you need? 68, you would need to plant 68? To get six, yeah, 68. You would need to plant 68 bulbs. Cloves, no, cloves. Cloves to get 68 bulbs. Yeah. Okay. So that'd be one a week. Okay. So, okay. Hmm. You if you're using one per week, yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. And that should give you enough for your cannon too. Yeah. Okay. Best time to plant. Uh, for us, November, we got a chart here we can throw up there. Gives you guys an idea when to plant. Mm -hmm. um, where to plant? A nice sunny spot, just like where you'd plant your onions. Can you plant garlic from the grocery store? Uh, you might could, but a lot of times they're sprayed with an anti-sprouting uh, agent that can interfere with them coming up and sprouting. Mm -hmm. They are treated sometimes to not sprout. So uh, preferably you'd want to use some seed garden that has not been treated. Okay. So we have our elephant growing guide up on our website elephant under garden. Halls University and we still have a few elephant garlic left. Yep, we do. That you can order? Mm -hmm. Our German white's gone? German white's gone. Now next year, next year we're working with the farmer up in New York State and we're thinking next year we're going to have more supply and different Varieties, mm. more varieties. I there. like some red. Yeah, I'm gonna try the red too. Yeah. But I really want some insight from you guys as successful here in the South. What varieties that you've had success Even with? Even the before. North. Let us know what you're doing. Yeah, but North. particularly here in the South, where we can replicate that. Okay. Yeah, we'll know that. Yep. All right, so there you have it, folks. Time to plant your garlic, elephant garlic, or your hard neck or soft neck garlic. Hope that right. helps somebody. And our Garden Spotlight of the Week. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Now look at that pretty picture right there. Gorgeous. Yep, this is from Kelly Welker. And Kelly is in Greenbrier, Arkansas in Zone 7. And Kelly is growing tomatoes, squash, peppers, cucumbers, the usuals, loofahs, zinnias, hollyhock, dahlias, sunflowers, ketchup, lavender, thyme, sage, Lemon balm, hyssop, bee balm, oh, wow. calendula, and a toothache plant. Mm. Toothache plant. I want y'all to remember that because we got that coming out in a, uh, a few weeks. In a collection. In a collection. That's going to be good. Looks right like most of hers are raised beds. Yeah, and the nice pretty greenhouse there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got bad soils, hey, this is a pretty good way of doing it. There's no excuse for not growing your own food. You just sometimes you have to make things work for you. So if you got bad soils, maybe use those raised beds like she's using right there or he's using. It. Kelly, a man or woman, I don't know. Pretty garden, Kelly, mm -hmm. anyway. Thank you for yep. sending that in. Corny joke, I got one this week. All right, I'm ready. I may have, may not have used this before. Yep. You ready? Yep. Did you hear about the dog who ate a bunch of garlic? Did I hear about the dog? No, I did not. His bark was worse than his bite. It's real corny shit. <laughs> it was. Okay. That was almost so corny it was funny. <laughs> so we forgot the goat growing last week. You I know, the I old did. goat, you forgot, the, but the old goat's on the set here somewhere, somewhere and that's what we're, we're drawing for. If you see the old goat on the set in the comments below, put your answer and we have a drawing. So we send some special All to right. you. So we have two tonight. We have two. I forgot last week. Yep. So this is actually two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Ha! Huh. How about it? Sherry Lou is the winner. Oh, uh, Sherry Lou, my favorite name. I love that name, Sherry Lou. Uh -huh. Sherry Lou, send your shipping address to cussserv at hallstools.com. And then this is for last week. And... Jared Merchant. Jared, you are a winner as well. Send us your information to serve at hosstools.com and we will get both of y'all some coveted host right. merchandise. Right, so if you find the old goat this week, just put it in the comments where you found it at and we'll enter you into a uh, drawing next week. Yep. If I don't forget. Yep. Strawberry plants, we've still got, I just looked this morning, we got a few strawberry plants. They're going to be in next month, so... 
probably about the middle to the end. I won't say, I hope somewhere around the 15th, 20th. Of October? In. Yeah, October. They're going to be in. So you want to go ahead and get your strawberry plants. Get that area for. Yep. ready to. Get that area ready and get them, get them bought. And we'll ship them out to you when they get here. I have a few elephant garnet left mm -hmm. and then your onion plants. Onion plants is coming the 1st of November. Mm -hmm. We got three great varieties this year. We got a red and two of those two What'd of the What do you think wilds. of my sweet potato chips? They're a little spicy for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a huge sweet potato chip fan. Are sweet potatoes other than sweet potato souffle? Correct. But those was a little spicy for me. So I, I think not all of them. I think I might have. I think you step your two on the spices on. But mm -hmm. you like them. That's the main thing. Yeah, I like them. Yep. All right. All right, folks. A little prayer for those folks in the hurricane, the path of hurricane. We hope everything turns out well. And after all this is over with, it's going to be time for us to get out there and get back in that garden and get dirty. Thank you for joining us.